Today we are asking, say war did break out, who would win World War 3? If this were just a case of America dealing with Assad's using chemical weapons on his own people in the war torn Syria, or even America quashing North Korea in aggression, the more advanced American artillery and technology would be far superior. But if Russia rushed to the aid of Syria, and China rushed to back Kim Jong Un in North Korea, the West could have a pretty tricky situation on their hands. If there is anything that can be learned from Germany in previous World wars, it is that it is very hard, if not impossible, to fight a war on two fronts. But America of course would not be alone. Our opposition lineup could be Russia, China, North Korea and Syria, but teamed up South Korea and the United States would almost undoubtedly have the backing of Canada, the UK and large parts of Europe. Let's have a look at military strength. The USA in theory has the most powerful military in the world. There are 1.4 million active troops in the states, 13,000 1,892 aircraft, 8,848 tanks, and the biggest naval fleet in the world, which includes 288 battle force ships and over 300,000 active personnel. The United States budget is almost 10 times that of Russia's, with the states slapping down $577 billion on war, compared to Russia's $60 billion. Russia, North Korea, China, and Syria's naval fleets combined are nothing compared to the United States, without factoring in their powerful allies like the UK and South Korea. China however is less well equipped, but does have more active troops, 2,333,000 to be precise, and Russia, well, their only upper hand is controlling a lot of oil. Nuclear weapons, who has them? Well Russia actually has the most, 7,300 to the United States 6,970. North Korea has about 10, and it is actually quite unsure if they're even able to launch them. Meanwhile China has around 260, and the the UK has around 215. If France gets involved for the US, they have a further 300. Furthermore, if Trump's tweets are anything to go by, the USA could be looking to expand their arsenal. But do the numbers really matter when it comes to nukes, or even aircraft, naval ships, etc? Well, after a certain point, no. They don't really matter. As Russian leader Vladimir Putin once said, Russia could destroy America in half an hour or less. And if they ever did press that button, the US would resort to mutually assured destruction, something laid out by John F. Kennedy during the Cold War. Russia could see some US sent Minuteman 3 rockets that would all but vaporize them. Perhaps winning the war really comes down to who can push a button fastest. But let's evaluate that word winning for a second. What exactly would winning entail? World War I claimed the lives of 18 million people. Around four times the amount were killed in World War II just some 25 years later, with a low end estimate death toll of 75 million. Now, over 70 years of worldwide peacetime later, imagine how many people would die. Two nukes were dropped in World War II, on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Do you know how powerful those bombs were compared to what we have today? Well, today's bombs are thousands of times more powerful. Some 230,000 people died horrible deaths in those two blasts alone. Some even had their skin melted off their bodies. If the world went to war today, tomorrow, in a week, in a month, in a year, whenever, there would be no winners. Only countries destroyed, with their land poisoned with nuclear waste for years to come. There wouldn't be one loser. The whole world would hurt. The rivers would run with blood, and life as we know it would not and could not be the same ever again. If you're asking who could do the most damage? The answer is probably, all things considered, America. But not before Russia took a huge, never healing chunk out of it. It would be close too, and ultimately, it would not be worth it. To win at war is to lose at peace. And if we enjoy living comfortable, informed, and technologically advanced lives on this planet, then we have to focus on winning at peace. Winning at peace means working together. Together, we can protect our environment, develop technologies beyond our wildest dreams, explore the universe, and from all this, we are sure to find some pretty important answers to life's biggest questions.